That's just so real, isn't it? <laughs> Which is loads of meat in noodles. I love Chinese roaches. It's every night on tour. Guitar wise, what can I show you that we didn't take? There's a couple of guitars I keep at home that I don't take out just because I don't know really. I just keep them nice. This is a BB King. Lucille, it's an early one. Why did I go towards blues rather? I don't know really. I, well, a part of it I think was the. You know, it was the music I was exposed to when I was a kid. It was what was in the house, and I loved it because it was so. You know, in blues, there's a lot of guitar playing. And then, as I, you know, as I grew up, it just became a sort of an obsession and a love. I can't really explain it, but it's um, it certainly never wavered. You know, it's it's really been. I like a lot of genres of music, but but blues is what I love to play. You know. So at this particular moment, we. Um we, we announced the album last Thursday and we had a great response. Um, we released one song, Temperature Rising, which is the title track from not the previous album, but it, the, the one before that. A very different version. The horns are quite prominent in that. It's sort of become a different song, which is what I intended. I didn't want to repeat, repeat myself. People seem to really like it. Some people are on the fence with it. Some people were sort of, we love a big band sound. Some people were like, not really sure. And I think it divided opinion before before that, but I think people are pleasantly surprised that it hasn't really changed anything. It's just added a sort of extra colour. So we're we're a, a month away tomorrow from release date, and um, I'm sitting here talking to you, which is always fun because you're on the road with us. So we're making this this documentary, I guess, about about how the album came together from start to finish, and we'll see it through till it's released. Hopefully give people a bit of an insight into making of a, an album and, and a labour of love. Two or three years ago I was done, he was part of a benefit concert. He had to get on stage, which was a quick line check and there was a, a brass section on stage with him and he really enjoyed playing that night. And then a few weeks later we have seen some YouTube footage and, it, and I think it all went around a bit of a blur. It was a very busy time for us. And we were like kind of amazed at how, like the magic of the footage and, and the response that this footage had received as well. And it was like, yeah, Danny, you've got to do this. This is, you know, for me personally watching him, this is what he was made for. Not many guys in the blues feel, you know, take out a four piece horn line and, and keys and rhythm guitar and everything like that. Logistically, you know, it can be difficult, it can be quite expensive. But it was a dream I had. There's a lot more colours going on, so you add something different, and that was really what I wanted. I wanted these songs that I'd written over the last two or three albums to sound like um, they might have been recorded with a, a, a road band in the 50s or 60s, you know, in terms of the blues genre. We booked some shows in Europe and we recorded them all. So it began in Norwich because in order for us to sell this project, Danny Bryant does something different. We needed a, a video and we needed a song recorded with a big band. Hello, welcome back to Grange Farm Studios and we are working on the big project for Danny Bryant. You can hear that noise in the background. That's the brass section. We've got brass, we've got Hammond, we've got piano and it's all to die for. And the idea of the video was to show the audience what this project was. We had a lot going on at the time. Very sadly, Danny's dad actually passed away just before he was due to go into the studio. And it was all just a bit manic. Good. Are you alright, Pete? Tired? No, 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 no. No, I'm fine. Yeah. And it was like, actually, what's the point in doing a brand new song whenever you're going to be going out to play your back catalogue and kind of some really select covers? You know, let's show people what you're actually going to do. I have this song, Prisoner of the Blues, that quite a lot of people know. It's pretty popular live. Um, it's one of our, our favourites to play and the, the audience always seems to request it and enjoy it. So I thought if we put that in a big band format, people are going to see how 
how it's coloured the sound. I keep coming back to that, but it, you know, it's not it's not changed it beyond recognition. It's added a different a different colour, a different dimension to it. It's fucking better than shagging you. Richard, I have known pretty much ever since I started recording, and I mean making demos. Yeah, what's happening, Big Breaker, Big Bear? got cruise missiles coming in 500 feet over and he'd recorded everyone okay, no, richard was in a successful band and then he got into recording and his last ever project was the manic street preachers you know he, he'd recorded a lot of bands i remember doing a japanese rock band or girl rock band that's quite good and he kind of had enough of it you know um and he got more into songwriting and, and he'd had enough of engineering and producing got a call from danny saying do you remember me? Or something like that. And of course I bloody remember him. And I, uh, he said, I want to do an album, but I want some, you know, I want a friend to do it with me, and will you commit? But I wanted someone I trusted, and someone that was really good, and would tell me what to do and direct me, but someone that could communicate with me, and I knew that it would work. I don't want you to suffer because of my rancor. And you know, to his credit, he said, well, blues really isn't my forte or my thing. He said, you know, I don't want to just make a traditional straight ahead 12 bar blues album as much as I know that you love that. And it's been like almost a blues tutorial work with Danny of these last three albums. This has been our fourth now. And I've got to say, I love it now. I actually like the music, you know. And I am, I know everyone thinks I'm being flatulent, but I am a big fan of Danny. Richard and I working together is an ongoing process, and I think we're sort of a long way from exhausting it. Al, I've known for three years. Oh my goodness, I can't remember that far back. He was a great, great player, trained musically, witty guy, great company to have, responsible, exactly everything you want from a musician, really. Dave, I've known since, well, I first, the first time I ever met Dave was when I got his autograph when I was like 14 or 15, when he was in a band called The Hoax. I thought he was a bit of a git, to be honest. <laughs> so I was no. and, and Dave is an immense drummer. Always makes you play 100%. He's never has an, a night where he's off, and he never, he never lacks energy. We just kind of said, hello, mate, and he went, hello, mate, and we sort of wandered about the place and uh, went to a record stall. He came and, up to me and said, uh, I want to make a band and blow their minds. Well, I'm very It's kind of that power behind you that keeps you going and says, you know, come on, this is great. We, you know, let's give it 110%. Stevie has played with a few friends of mine on the scene. I'd heard his playing, I thought it was fantastic. And then we met at a show a while back. But then really, I probably met him in the studio and he was lovely. He's really, I'm not, I'm not just saying this because the camera's pointing at me. But also like, look for personalities that I like because I think that's very important. Very welcoming, made me feel very at home. And Six Sense of Humour, which is right up my street. And then we had these, these, these four guys, three guys and one, one girl in, in the brass section, which I'd never met until the day we did the video, until um, the day you came down to shoot in, in Emnath. Again, another bunch of great personalities. You've got Mark, who's got the best hair I've ever seen. Besides being a great player, they're all great players. You can't really, you know, you can't fault how good his hair is. You've got David, who's the real musicologist, I think. And you've got his brother, Alex, who's also a fantastic guitar player, so he can make us all jealous. Thorin, who was brilliant, was a real fireball. She was the, uh, she, she always got the party started. And again, a fantastic player. And, and all those guys playing lots of different bands and they're all brilliant and they come together to make a, a superb unit. It went, it went down really well and the response was great and that was kind of the beginning of the project and that set the wheels in motion and that's where it started.